Anchors up. Sales at full. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? Hate, Jared. Hate? It is hate week. It is hate week. It is the game. It is that team mm-hmm. up north. It, it is. is. that team up north. It is Scarlet and Gray uh-huh. versus the Maze and Blue. Uh-huh. We're finally here again after a whole year. Finally uh, back at it to, to look year for of, a revenge here. A year of pain. Just in case there's any Michigan, just in case there's any Michigan fans who are or listening or watching this out of hate. Um, yeah, so it was a year of pain. Um, I, I had to, I had to be, I had to feel that thing that you guys feel like the other 17 years of the past 19 or whatever the hell it is. If you're a Michigan fan listening, you are weird. Fair. Some people hate watch. I don't. I never go like watch another team's thing. I never do that. But some people do. It's fine. I don't hate it. Right, well, so- your 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 download is just as good as everyone else's download. It still counts to my statistics. <laughs> I still get paid. <laughs> All right, let's let's not waste any more time, Jared. It is time to know our enemy, the team up north. The team up north. Kyle refuses to say their name, and I respect him for it. To be honest, thank you, thank you, Kyle. We well, you you just spent some time going through the statistics. Um, what's anything stick out to you? Like just going through all the statistics. Seeing seeing what everything Michigan had to offer and has achieved so far this year. Thoughts? Any any so, anomalies? Any any overall any any overall feelings? Yeah. So I mean, uh, as much as it hates me to to say it, I mean, got to give them credit. I did not think that this was going to be as good of a team beginning of the year. I thought that they were going to have a little step down, but here yeah. we are. They're they're undefeated coming into here, but I think a lot of it had to do with the schedule that they had. But um, surprised at that. But looking at the statistics here, yeah, definitely very good defense. Uh, the rushing attack is really good, led by a really, really good offensive line here. But one thing that was really interesting to me um, as I was looking at some of the stats here. Nobody really tries, or at least the percentage of playing call play calling against Michigan really try to run the ball against Michigan, which, which yeah, they un- understand why they they're only letting up what is it seventy five ish yards a game, right? I mean, that's that's that is just absurdly good, but a lot of teams are just are passing it because they either down a lot early or they just they just can't run the ball and we've seen that a number of times uh earlier this year too and you know what it's it's the same thing with ohio state too there's some teams that they got down early and they had to pass the ball more often which then ohio state's defensive numbers on the rushing on the rushing side looks pretty good as well yeah um they are 17th in the country opponents percentage running against them. Uh, they're fifth in the country at uh, the number of rushes teams attempt against them. And they're second in the country for the yards per rush. And they're number one in yards per game, which, you know, the fact that the average is low and the number of attempts are low would tell you that that that's going to be the, that's going to be the case. Yeah. So, so some of the things to, that kind of is eye opening to me, uh, I think on both sides here, penalties. I was sharing this with Jared right before we hit record here. Penalties. Oh, I'm I'm getting there, gangland. No worries. Penalties on both sides. It's not just that it's favoring one side or the other, but on both sides, whenever the team up north plays, that, that yellow flag tends to stay in the referee's pocket. There aren't that many penalties called on either side. Um they are 11th in penalties, or excuse me, um, they're ninth in penalties per game. 
It's Colorado State, Austin. But they're dead last in opponents' penalties per game. So, so yeah, it's I. I think that's an important stat to kind of look at too. Is that is that they don't commit that many penalties in Ohio State at times, and we saw that last weekend, and it hurt them quite a bit in some of the drives. Yeah, got to stop. Got to stop with the those dumb penalties. You're late in the, the season. That that stuff has to clear up. You you cannot have those kind of penalties to to set you back on on drives, and then you're forced to punt. Then got to really it, clean that up. It, it should be said I, that Ohio. It, it doesn't matter if it's on the road. It was a forty some it's, thousand. It's, it's Maryland. Um, it's not yeah, like it's you were Maryland, dealing 40, 40, people in the stands there. It wasn't loud. There, there's no. no excuse. I'd no give excuse. them. I'd give them a pass if it were a whiteout. But it wasn't. It was Maryland. But we're, <laughs> this wasn't a hundred thousand screaming. <laughs> I almost said something inappropriate. Penn State <laughs> fans. It, it was. It was Maryland at noon. Clearly, we didn't prep for that game. Um. May have been prepping for this game. I mean, for being honest, yes. that may have been what have was happened. happening. I mean, I mean, you could say the same thing with uh, literally with every top ten, literally every yeah. top ten team in the country last week. Also, yeah. three thirty, not noon. Yeah, but it was the Eastern Time Zone. Don't think about what I just said. Just accept it. Um, I have a, I have a theory. So the, last, so the last, last stat here that was really surprising, Jared, is one. There has been all year. The team up north has only forced one fumble and recovered that fumble all year on defense. Right. And that and that also that also goes into a th- the theory I'm I'm sort of and I wasn't able to confirm this unfortunately. I didn't I didn't think to look this up until Kyle and I started talking before the show, so I didn't have a lot of time to look it up. Um what I have not figured out I look at like, oh, look, there aren't many penalties called and and Michigan doesn't have many turnovers. And I started wondering, again, I, w- I really wish I could have found this number. I wonder how many plays are are played in an average Michigan game versus the average. Mm-hmm. How many plays way less gangland says I suspect that's also true because you know as Kyle was pointing out teams are running the ball a little less than half the time against Michigan but on the offensive side of the ball Michigan runs the ball 61 and a half percent of the time one of the reasons why you see and by the way I'm not this is not me saying, well, the only reason Michigan has really good defensive numbers is that no, I'm not I'm not saying that. It's a very good defense. But one of the things that you know, they're they're a top 15, top 10 defense regardless. But it certainly helps from a statistical standpoint that the offense runs the ball and drains the clock. So I'm just I'm thinking that like the fumbles, the penalties, um, the fact that Michigan's number one in every defensive category, a little bit, a little bit of that is 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 being caused by the fact that I just don't think that there are a ton of total plays in a Michigan game because of the way. And by the way, this is their strategy. This is kind of what Jim Trestle did for most of his tenure at Ohio state, just like drain that clock out, play good defense, drain the clock out, be efficient. Don't turn the ball over. It's a strategy. Uh, Michigan is around the middle of the FBS. Are you saying in like plays per game? Cause that's what I'm saying. I mean like total plays per game, not just plays by Michigan. He said, yes, he he keeps saying yes. So, so that, okay. That, hold on, that, that, maybe that my one, maybe my theory is not so great then. That one forced fumble, middle to bottom, on on defense, Jared. Guess guess when that happened. I don't know. The very first game against Colorado State. So since the first week, they have not forced a fumble. Kyle, you bring up a very important point. 
We, we look at these stats. Michigan, opponent points per game, number one in the country. Yards per game, number one in the country. Points per play, which again sort of blows my theory I was saying about the number of plays being played out of the water. Number one in the country. Yards per play, 3.9 yards per play, which is number one in the country. Mm-hmm. Opponent third down conversion percentage, 12th in the country. Really good. Yep. Very good. Opponent red zone scoring percentage, number 33 in the country. It's very good. There's 130, good. 130 teams in FBS. It's very good. Now, apparently uh, they're number 70 based on a reference sheet, and I feel like that says a lot about them not being nice. Fair. Um, it took me a second to realize what you meant by that. Um, they opened, yeah, uh, Gangland, it is now time to talk about that. Yes. We look at all these statistics, and it needs to be said that Michigan made it all the way to October 15th without playing a team that has a fucking pulse. They played Penn State, who is a fine football team. I think they are properly ranked just outside of the top 10. I think that's about who they are. I believe that they're just about outside the top 10 teams in the country. I think that is a very appropriately ranked football team. And by the way, slaughtered them, beat them way harder than Ohio State beat them. That should be said. But Jared, Ohio State's schedule. I can tell by your 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 capping that you're capping. I've never said that before, and I regretted it. I feel like an old man. Um, <laughs> Nomad. What's up, buddy? Um, number four uh, score over record. Um, yes. It sounded bad off the tongue. Yeah, I'm an old man. I shouldn't be saying cap. Um, Strength of record. Yeah, that score over record, I think, is of the same concept. But yeah, no, you're right. Strength of record. Um, You said it, not me. Yeah. And it isn't cap. I'm I'm not going to not going to have that conversation right now because I'm an old man. Colorado State, Hawaii, Connecticut. This was Michigan's idea of an out-of-conference schedule. Exactly, really? gangland. I'm not ready for that conversation. Really? Colorado State, Hawaii, Connecticut. Connecticut, last I looked, I forget who does it. Is it Yahoo? Yahoo? Someone, someone always does their bottom 25. I believe UConn's last. Yeah, it's, it's, um, no, it's CBS. CBS does it. UConn is last. Hawaii was, they, they were last. I I think they're still last. I think I I saw it on Twitter this week. Um, Hawaii is a team that barely has scholarship players on the roster because everyone run ran fleeing from that country. They're not last anymore. Okay. They're close. Yeah. They're close. Um, Colorado State is the lesser team in the state of Colorado, which is saying a lot because <laughs> Colorado is also terrible. Okay. So I'm looking here. So they played Colorado State, right? Yes. They are the, they ranked fifth in the bottom 25. Hawaii, seventh. And UConn is not anymore because they, okay. they've, they've gone on a, they've gone on a winning streak. Uh, Fair. What, what are they now? They are, they're six and six now. Nomad points out that there is a third FBS team in Colorado that I had forgotten was in Colorado, uh, the Air Force Academy. They're also worse than the Air Force Academy. Point is, is that Michigan didn't play anybody in the off, in their in their out of conference. I mean, literally nobody. While Ohio State was beating Notre Dame by double digits, 
And by the way, Toledo could beat any of these teams, especially if they had their quarterback back. I'll say it. Yep. Arkansas State, maybe not. I don't know. They're, they're, they're kind of bad. Um, yep. But if Toledo had their quarterback, they could beat all three of those teams. Then they proceeded to play Maryland. And this is the game in which Toledo was hurt. That that should be noted. I think that's right, isn't it? I just doubted myself the second I said that. No, is that not right? Uh, no. I Esquire said I'm right. He did. He got he hurt did. during the game. Gangland says I'm right. You're right. You're right. Yes. Ha ha. Um, then they played Iowa and I was Iowa. Um, 27, 14 on that game. Indiana's terrible. Then they don't like give them credit where credit's due. Yeah. If, if Esquire says it, I'm legally obliged to agree. Yeah, yes, you are. By court order. That's how that works. Um, I said obligated. Did I not? Obliged? Did I really? That's a stupid thing to say. Um, okay, and give them credit where credit's due. They dominated Penn State. Penn State, good football team. They dominated them. Credit where credit's due. Yep. And they played Michigan State, Rutgers, Nebraska, and then they played their second team with a pulse all year. All year. They've played two good teams. And I'm mm -hmm. counting Illinois as a good team here. I'm not, I don't feel like I'm, <laughs> really don't feel like I'm, I mean, I guess if we're going to count in Illinois, we should count Iowa, right? Is that fair? If we're going to count Illinois, you should probably count Iowa, which I don't know if that's a compliment to Iowa or an insult to Illinois, but this <laughs> is where we are right now. Yeah. I know it's, it's cliche to say it, but they ain't played nobody. Paul. Yes. All right. Let's, let's talk a little bit about their players now. Um, we could go on and on about their schedule, but we're going to talk about their players, Jared. Okay. Uh, elephant in the room. Injuries. Yep, elephant in the room. It's the running backs here. Still question up about Corum and Edwards uh, potentially trying to play, probably not going to be playing. We're, we're still, as, as of a recording, nothing, nothing's been uh, said here. There's talks about Edwards going to try to try to play. I, I just don't see that if he has a cast wearing on his hand, if, if the reports are true. I, I don't see that. There's no way a running back can have a cast and run the ball. No way. No way. I've heard Edwards has a broken hand bone. Um, one of those bones. Yeah. Um, well, I, that again, that's also what I have heard. There's literally no. Gangland. Gangland. Uh, None of these are Zeke though. <laughs> uh, we don't have any official injury news out of Michigan whatsoever. And we're not going to. And like, you just need to accept that. And for God's yep. sakes. First metacarpal you heard. Well, that's more specific. Um, <laughs> I'm thinking, nope, I'm not going to try and pronounce that. That's the bone below the index finger. I, I don't know. Ask England, um, which you probably are doing. Staphoid. Scaphoid. That's okay. Scaffold. Right. Um, so again, like, and I'm going to ask everyone humbly. Um, my Thanksgiving wish is for everyone to stop analyzing every syllable that comes out of the mouths of Ohio state and Michigan players. Please stop it. Yeah. We all turn into English lit majors this time of year. <laughs> Pouring over every word like it's fucking Shakespeare. Trying to interpret. Oh, did you did you hear that this Michigan player said that they were preparing for potentially playing without quorum, you guys? Can you pronounce that better? Uh, you're going to have to be more specific. I mispronounce everything. Um. Do you get a pass? No, you don't. No one gets a pass. I'm actually going to be pronunciation judge at a spelling bee next week. So exciting. Um, 
mind-bogglingly exciting. But yeah, Blake Corum, Donovan Edwards. Yeah, you did, but yeah. Nothing is darker or weirder than the gift library for the word participle. <laughs> I can only imagine. Blake Corum, Donovan Edwards. I like how you guys are right. the ones distracting me while simultaneously telling Kyle to make me stop talking. So I don't I don't believe Edwards is going to play. I think Corum, I think Corum will uh will give it a shot here. Uh just just my just my hunch. And I, I think he'll He'll have an impact here, but really who's going to have to be the difference maker. It's going to be, it's going to have to be JJ McCarthy. Now, now you look at his numbers here. Oh, wow. He's almost thrown 2000 yards, um, only 14 touchdowns, which I feel that, uh, <laughs> feel that CJ would, um, beat that in three games, but, uh, <laughs> yeah, you can definitely pick three games. I would say you could probably find three consecutive games in which he beat that. Yes. Yeah, uh, but and we've se we've seen, and I wish, and I looked, I could not find the stat. But his average, um, the average yardage that the ball travels per throw has got to be so low oh, for JJ. Was, you got me excited, yeah. Kyle. I I thought maybe you actually had that number. <laughs> I really, really was looking. I couldn't find it, but. But it's it's got to be so low. It's got to be so low because I mean, he has no zip. He has no zip when he's throwing the ball. Yeah, he, he can't get into he can't get into tight spaces. It's it's a lot of just short passes to to running back to shoemaker to uh, Bell, and then they they out they're athletes and they make a play then, which it is fine. But if you're Ohio State and you're playing that three safety uh, that that one safety should start playing a little should start creeping up a little closer there one what am i kidding one two of those safeties should start creeping up closer yeah by the way um who said it esquire said it jj is like 50 percent completion for 6.7 yards per attempt um mm -hmm. 7.9 per attempt and 66.8. But if you look at his like per game statistics, it's just been sliding down. So if you're talking like the last three weeks, that those numbers are actually fairly close to what is the yards on what is the yardage on pass per catch? Not no yak. Um, I if I had that number, I'd give it to you. I don't have that. I don't. That that that's a very specific number. Small lot. Yeah. No. No. I mean, I've seen him try to throw the ball over ten yards. It doesn't go well. Look no further than the Illinois game last year or last week. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anytime he tried tried to throw the ball further than ten yards, the ball. You're right, Esquire. He can't get it up. He can't get it up past 10 yards. If he tries to throw the ball further than 10 yards, the ball's either arriving late and therefore behind the wide receiver, or it's floating and going over their heads. He cannot throw the ball. He cannot throw the ball more than 10 yards down the field with any amount of accuracy. Yep. Read your players to watch. We will. We'll get there. I promise. Um, Chop Daddy, aka Sloop Daddy, aka Stuart E4US Vet is our guest picker this week, by the way. Um, so, by the so way, and yeah, just, just throwing this out there, um, I Kyle said it already, but I am just going to agree with him real quick. I don't expect Corum to play, and if he does play, even if he does play, you're going to see a very reduced version of Corum, he's yeah, not he's going to be himself. And no, as far as Donovan definitely. Edwards goes, one, I think, but I think, I think Corum is a fine running back. Don't get me wrong. I think he's a fine running back, but 
make no mistake, it's the offensive line that makes him. Michigan has a tremendous offensive line. They've only given up eight sacks this year. And again, Corum, 5.9 average. Edwards, 5.9 average. C.J. Stokes, who could very well be the running back for Michigan this week, has a 5.1 average. They have an excellent offensive line. If it's if Corum's out and Edwards plays, that's not a step down. I'm telling you, well, a healthy Edwards anyway. If you had to replace Corum with a healthy Edwards, that is not a step down. I'm telling you right now, that's not a step down. Again, I think Corum's a very fine running back, but I don't, he's not special. Their offensive line, however, is special. They have a very special offensive line. Corum's a very good running back. And Edwards is a very good running back. And by the way, they ran Corum 245 times this year. The fact that he's hurt, because you know, if Michigan loses this game, there's going to be the Michigan fans who are like, well, you know, if we had had Blake Corum, then then it'd be a totally different, you know, because guess what? It's Harbaugh's fault you don't have Blake Corum. You ran him 245 times. You were running him 20, 20, 25, 30 times a game in games that were already decided. Stop this and read my stuff. You're killing my vibe. <laughs> Stuart, I'm going to ask you to be patient. Um, Harbaugh did this. Harbaugh did this. It's his fault. The fact that he, I assume, doesn't have Blake Corum for this game is his fault. He mm, ran the is, absolute shit out of Blake Corum this year. Him mm. getting hurt was very predictable. In fact, I think I said it more than one time during the course of this season. They are running the shit out of Corum. Can he survive? You did. Mm -hmm. See, and Austin will be the first one to give me shit. <laughs> you know if Austin's backing me up? So last time, so I'm, I was just curious about stats and, and um, running backs for, for Ohio State, how many times the running backs have run the ball. Yeah. So far this year, Williams 117, Henderson 107. Very low. Uh, Henderson in 2183 in 2020, granted a, uh, with less games, but Sermon had 116 and Teague had 104. Hmm. 2019, JK Dobbins, 301 rushing attempts. And then in 18, Dobbins had 230. That's 300 rushing attempts, but that's 15 games. 14 games. I'm just saying like it's more games is my point. So it's not a fully apt comparison. Yeah, no, it's, it's 15 games. Is it 15? One, two, three, four. Yeah. It's 15. It. That's 15 games. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. you're one. Abuse the non-priority player. Games. Prop the priority player. Basically. Yeah. They right, um uh, uh, so some some other player other players to look out for. Uh, we mentioned mentioned a lot of the running backs, uh McCarthy, uh Schoonmaker as well. Uh so some of their wide receivers, Ronnie Bell mentioned is their leading receiver, 48 catches, 641 yards, and two touchdowns for the year. And then the next players is uh Cornelius Johnson, 25. 300 yards and four touchdowns and Roman Wilson has 19 for 272 yards and three touchdowns. I am begging everyone at the, okay. I'm, I'm begging, I'm begging Knowles. I'm, I'm begging coach Knowles. No, don't, no, no, no seven, eight yard buffers this week. That's like, that's JJ's throwing limit. Scoot up, press man cover one. Fret little press man cover one, a little bit of cover two. Noel should just run a bare 
D. I'm not against that either. <laughs> no, I'm not either. My guess, that's the reason we played off last week. By the way, this is a, I don't know if I agree or not. I don't know if I agree or not, but it's its a popular theory that I, I won't actively disagree with. Ohio, <laughs> one of the reasons why Ohio State's been sort of playing off or just maybe not even just some of the questionable coaching decisions. People have been like, they're just putting it on tape for Michigan. Maybe it's true. Maybe it's true. I don't know. And maybe KJ Hill will start or God, I, damn it. I did it again. I said, KJ <laughs> Hill. I, I, it's not, it's, was it like the fourth time I've done that this year? Probably. KJ Hill is an all American on this pod. He, he, he is. Um, yeah. Uh, in Jigba, if maybe he makes a surprise comeback this game. I, I'm I just saying, if we're doing conspiracy theories, <laughs> I doubt it. I know I'm, we're doing, this is conspiracy theory corner. That's what we're doing right now. So they're averaging, Quorum is averaging 22 and a quarter. I absolutely would want him to. Game. Jared. I would absolutely want him to, Austin. All right. Um, moving on to the defense, and then we'll go into our predictions here. So defensively, uh, they got their, their front seven is is pretty good. Uh, their their dual linebackers, uh, Junior Colson and Michael Barrett, lead the teams in tackles. And I think probably the biggest um, obstacle I think Ohio State has to watch out for for Coulson. this. Um, for this uh, T tons um, defense here is Chris Jenkins. Uh, Chris, Chris is third as a defensive tackle in total tackles. You don't really see that in tackle in uh, defensive tackles, getting that many uh, tackles for the year. But he's, he's especially he's a, he's on a, a team he's a difference maker, especially on a team that there's not a lot of rushing plays against. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Gangland asks, are they good or have they played no one? It's it's both. It's both. Like, because even if you've played no one, you couldn't have been as consistently seven points, 10 points, zero points, 27 points, 14, 10, 17, 7, 17, 3, 17. Only once. And it was against it was against Talia before because he got hurt late in that game. Talia is the only Maryland led Talia is the only team to score over 20 on them this year. And mm -hmm. I don't care how bad your schedule is. That takes talent. Yep. So you can absolutely say that it's part of the schedule. Of course it is. They haven't played a good quarterback outside of Talia this year, period. They haven't. There's not a good quarterback all year that they have played to this point other than Talia. He's number one, two, and three best quarterbacks they've played this year. So In it's the true. Point. The fact that they, it is absolutely true that they have not played anybody this year. But even if you're playing nobody to only allow one team to score over 20 points on you is still impressive. It's still impressive. Especially, I mean, on November 19th, which is the last game they played. Even if you're playing a soft schedule, that is still an impressive feat. Yeah, no, it, it absolutely is. Uh, the last the last player I'll, I'll mention to uh, our audience here um, on the uh, team up north's uh, defense here is uh, Rod, Rod Moore, their safety uh Leads the team in interceptions and is a is a difference maker when it comes to that run stop support there. That he's he's all over the field to to make those open field tackles. Uh, definitely another player to watch out for. Three. Yep, three. Three gangland. Three interceptions. Which for the year, they've only they only have eight interceptions for the year. So this defense has only caused nine turnovers all year. Correct. I, I mean, and again, like I just, 
I don't know if there's been a ton of plays run against them, which one helps make their yardage statistics look good, but also is going to hurt their turnover statistics. Yeah. Cause they lar- cause they just play a lot of keep away with the ball. Yep. All right, let's get, let's go ahead and get into our predictions here, Jared. So your time to sign, shine Stuart. Yep. Here you go, Stuart. All right. We will start with Ohio state player to watch. What is the one player in this Ohio state team to watch out for? Uh, I'll go first. Tommy pickle. Eichenberg. got to, you stop the, uh, excuse me, Tommy pickles. Eichenberg. Um, you stop the run. You win this game. If you force JJ McCarthy to win this game, he won't period. And again, this is a very good Michigan offensive line. This is not a game in which I necessarily expect the defensive line to absolutely take over. They can't get dominated. Don't get me wrong. But I think a large part of what the defensive line will need to do in this game is to occupy blockers because they're not going to beat the Michigan offensive line with any consistency. So the defensive line is going to have to be playing offensive line blocking for their blockers and allowing the linebackers to take this game over, uh, enter steel chambers. Obviously I picked Tommy pickles, uh, but yeah, you can, but I'm yeah. So I, mean, I, I would give either answer. And by the way, I think this is also a football game in which we get a heavy uptick of Cody Simon snaps. I think this is a, I think this is a Cody Simon game. Um, I agree. I agree. 100%. Yeah. my, my player to watch here, and he's been on a tear. He's been on a tear with uh, 25. Is it about 25? Yeah, about 25 tackles in the last three games here. Yep. And that's Ransom. I got, I Ransom. got my player to watch. I got my player to watch Ransom. Ransom's uh, very hot right now. He is yeah, very hot. coming yeah, off like a said, couple he, great games. Yeah, the past two games, he's at nine tackles, nine tackles, seven tackles. Coming up, yeah, he's he's on a really hot streak and back to back weeks of blocked punts. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, he he's going to be that player as well as the linebackers too. But I think getting that second that second um, level of defense to 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 come up to, for that run blocking or that run stopping, as well as there to um, to help cover for my enemy player to watch, uh, which is uh, Luke Schoonmaker. I think Ransom is going to have a lot on his plate to try to prevent as um, many big plays that uh, Schoonmaker can have. So if Ransom can really hunker him down, not force him to not have him get to all those receptions and yardage after catch, it's going to be because of ransom. Uh, Gangland with a very good point in the chat. This is a Knowles masterclass game on two inexperienced offensive coordinators. Yeah, I think that's a very good point. A very seasoned defensive coordinator against two co-offensive coordinators with not a ton of offensive coordinating experience. I think that's a very valid point, Gangland. Um, Uh, So he plays way up on the line this game. Uh, very possible nomad, especially when they do decide to put three safeties in because, you know, they won't go, they won't go three linebackers the entire game. Obviously, um, they'll mix it up, but even when they are in the three safety look, they will have at least one of the linebacker, or excuse me, one of the safeties playing up in a linebacker esque bullet position. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. So up. Uh- Going back half step here. So Stewart is our guest picker here, and he actually has two two players to watch here. Uh, he has one on defense and one on one on offense. So on defense, he says DJ Turner. Uh, he says I feel as though we'll be chucking the ball around the yard. And he'll be manned up against Marv or Ibuka all day. I'm saying to watch him as we roast his ass. <laughs> and then for the finish it, not finish it. Oh, and he says, fuck Michigan. Thank you. 
All right. And the enemy offensive player, he says, if Corm is able to hobble on the field and get limping north and south, he would be my player to watch. But unfortunately, I feel that he may be hurt and give them perks up north a built-in excuse for their loss. I'm going to go with JJ as the enemy player to watch. He'll scramble and make incredible passes that land four to five yards outside of his re- receiver's catch radius and drop dimes to our defenders. His best play will be when he plays dead in a fetal position after being slammed into the turf repeatedly by the trio of Harrison, JT, and Jack. Um, I think you forgot uh, Tommy Pickles in there. Uh, uh, he says, suck it, McCarthy. You'll always be the quarterback who choose, who choose Michigan because they chose McCord. Burn. <laughs> Right. Uh, um, hold on. I said, Real... I, said my, I said my enemy player to watch, which was Luke uh, Schoonmaker. Who who do you have, Jared? Back over to that page real quick. Yeah, uh, I have Chris Jenkins. Um, dude's a monster in the defensive tackle realm. If Ohio State wants to run the ball with any level of efficiency, going to have to take care of Chris Jenkins one way or the other. Um, yeah, I was, I was really close in putting like... Uh, like Matthew Jones or Donovan as my player to watch because they're the one that's going to be right up on him to try to prevent him from making those plays. But Whippler. I, I, yep. Whippler too. Yeah. Uh, uh, real here real for, quick. We were, well, he Stuart was talking about JJ McCarthy. I want to back, I want to back up some from JJ McCarthy hate. Um, we were talking about this earlier with Esquire. Is Esquire still in the chat? Um, he was talking about JJ McCarthy's stats and he had joked that they were like 50% with the average pretty low. And I, I made the uh, joke that that's been more true of the late games um, against Illinois. I'll, I'll round up 53% against Nebraska, 47% completion percentage against Rutgers who is in the bottom 25, by the way, um, 48% completion percentage against Rutgers. So just pointing out that, yeah, it's, it's been on a ding, uh, decline, um, cause the numbers are a bit stacked from when he had a 91% against Hawaii and 83 against Yukon, uh, 69 nice against Maryland started off. Those first three games, but those last three, but the last three games been a different story for, for JJ McCarthy from a completion standage, uh, standpoint, as well as the ESPN QBR, which I quite frankly, don't put a lot of stock in, uh, but mm-hmm. just as a, as a means of comparison, he went from a hundred. Well, the, the, the Colorado state game doesn't count. Um, he only threw the ball four times. He didn't start that game. Uh, Hawaii, uh, 99, 74 against UConn and 72 against Maryland. Yep. And then right, that um, against Illinois, 46 and a half, Nebraska, 50 and a half. He's been on right, a decline uh, is my point. Yes. All right, and Stewart's um, Ohio State player to watch here. He says, I'm going with the homegrown Cade Stover. With the team up north uh, playing man coverage all day, this will open up our third and fourth options with lesser coverage corners to guard him. Stover catches passes and drags some asses for plays over the middle. Cade will prove this is truly year of the tight end. Also, he'll probably talk to the defender about how he prefers hawking over spending nights with the corner's mom. All right. Um, I'm I'm staying homegrown. I'm staying homegrown with a good guy defensive player to watch, and that's Zach Harrison. Uh, he's been coming on hard this year, and this is the game he elevates to the player he we always wanted him to be. Zach will spend the majority of his time picking himself up off of JJ and probably a few. Uh, I can't read that. Uh, probably a few scrotum drags across JJ's face mask to mark. You, his spot. you could read it. 
be honest. No, there, there, there was a red. There was a red underline it. I couldn't. I couldn't read it because the because uh, you you mis you misspelled scrotum. <laughs> you didn't have to say it again, Kyle. You didn't have to say it again. Well, just just uh, rub it in his face. So, God damn it, Kyle. <laughs> All right. All right. Um, the spread here for this game, Jared, seven and a half, seven and a half points for the good guys here. Oh, oh, I'm, I'm, I you missed the key, key matchup. matchup, key matchup here. I'll go first here and I'm going Jared here, guys. I'm going Jared and I'm going Ohio State's defensive line versus Teton's offensive line. That is not what I've been doing. I've been giving way more specifics than that by, by saying interior before those things. <laughs> uh, I'm going to go Ohio State linebackers versus uh, I forgot to do this. I completely agree with Kyle. There you go. Uh, I'm going with Ohio State's linebackers versus Michigan's running backs. Once again, the answer is Eichenberg versus whoever plays running back. There you go. And thank you for finally acknowledging uh, your misplaced aggression towards our, our good friend, Tommy Pickles. <laughs> All right, we're going to move a little quicker here, Jared. So the spread pick, Ohio State, the good guys, Favored by seven and a half points. Now, I haven't looked today, but I know yesterday uh, a lot of the a lot of the people who are betting against this are are not picking Ohio State to cover here. Seven and a half does seem like a lot. It's it. I mean, it's more than a touchdown, an extra point there. So that that definitely makes it harder to pick Ohio State to cover here. I think it was something like ninety five percent is picking Michigan to cover. But you know what? Not today. Not today. Ohio State does cover. I think the, I think the final score here is going to be Ohio State 38, team up north, 21. The one thing I'll say that makes me a little bit nervous, um, most of the money was going towards Ohio State last year, too, and the and the line never moved as a result, um, which is a thing we're seeing again this year for, for what it's worth. Um, anyway, my pick, um, I guys, this is not this is this is not a nice prediction. I'm sorry. I, I do am picking. It's just there's not going to be that many points scored this game. This is going to be a, a, a low scoring game um, by college football standards, a, a, a low scoring game. Well, the, well, the um, over under is 56. I, I would be going under that. I'm only predicting a total of 45 points in this game. Um, I, I am picking Ohio State to cover. I am picking Ohio State to cover uh, 31 to 14. 31 14 Ohio State. Yeah, similar, just that each similar to my score, Jared, just that each team has an extra touchdown in there. <laughs> All right. And what does Stewart say? He says here, first, first, I'm going to start off my game prediction with a statement Michigan ducked us in 2020. Yes. Yes, they did. Uh, second, Jimmy Howards. Harbs. Cowards. Uh, Jimmy Harbs, the cleat wearing pocket. Hot dog snacking, milk chugging, piece of human um, excrement lit a fire in Ryan Day last year when he disrespected Shit. him at the podium post game. This goober yeah. will suffer the wrath of evil Ryan Day this Saturday. There will be no mercy rule. Third, the players, new and old, have lived the past year knowing they're the first team to lose the team up north without circumstances beyond their control. They'll feed off their coach and embrace the rivalry. And to bring it home, I feel as though we have more talent than the team up north does all over the field. They'll try to dirty it up in the trenches with little to no luck. Our offense is going to go bombs over Baghdad with just the right amount of shove it down their throat. The final of this game will be Ohio State 49-20. to 20 with a win for the good guys, kicking off another 10 plus nice. years of ass whoopings for T ton. I also, also, I hope Ryan day brings a baseball bat 
to the after game presser to troll Harbaugh. That would be a good move. Um, a glove might be more his style. Just it's a little more subtle, I think. Um, yeah, I think we're good. All right. All right. We will quick here. Jared going to go with Austin's over unders. Austin is delivered some more over unders and we will quickly Jared go through these. Uh, I like how you said quickly, Jared. It's, 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 it's it's Ohio. (laughs) Kyle, it's hate week. And And those in the chat here, if you want to play along, feel free to over under here as well, too. All right. First off here, catches by Ohio State players not named Marvin Harrison Jr. at 17 and a half. Under. Under. I'm going under. I feel, I feel that CJ is really favoring uh, Harrison Jr. And I don't see that going away in this game. So under. Mecca does not appear to be getting open with any great consistency and Julian Fleming is getting open, but not making the catch with enough consistency. Um, I, it's hard. It's hard to blame CJ for favoring Marvin Harrison right now. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, Also here he has, um, Oh, wow. Did I, Oh boy. I read the, um, I read last week's. I apologize, Jared. Let me, let me get. Oh boy, Austin is down we're there. Starting. Austin we're, is down there, start. furious. All right, we're starting off great. All right, furious. All right, he has here. All right, uh, McCarthy interceptions at one and a half. I was letting him go. <laughs> uh, McCarthy interceptions at one and a half. Uh, under. Um, yeah, he's he's uh, only thrown not many this year. Yeah. I, I don't. Three. Yeah, We're it's not under. it's not many. It's not many. Yep. I also just uh, don't think they have the ball a ton. I feel like the normal time of possession advantage that Michigan enjoys uh, may not be there this week. Yeah. All right. Uh, their third string quarter quarterback, their third string running back, uh, CJ Stokes carries at 14 and a half over. over. All right. Eichenberg tackles at 13 and a half. That's really high. I'm going to go under. I'm going to go. <laughs> it's it's yeah. a good. I'm going to go over. It, it is a good number. It is a good number. I'm going to go over again because I I do feel like this isn't a game in which the defensive line gets a ton of tackles and that a bunch of those tackles will be distributed back to the linebackers. Okay. All right. Uh, their leading receiver, Ronnie Bell, catches. Over under five and a half. Over. Yeah, I think over. They're gonna they're gonna have to. They're gonna have to pass the ball um, more often in this game here. Uh, let's see. Uh, Schoonmaker slash Wilson touchdowns at one and a half. Under. I think I think between the two of them, they'll get one. They'll get one. So I mean, I only gave them two touchdowns for the entire game. So under all right uh team up north sacks two and a half under 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 uh, has he as has cj stroud been sacked twice in a game yet this season let alone three times that's a good question i don't have I, time to look it up but uh fair <laughs> i'm curious about that uh ohio state turnovers at two and a half under uh, yeah, under as Kyle has well established during the course of this show, Michigan does not force many turnovers. All right, Stroud touchdowns at three and a half. I'm gonna go over. I'll go over on this one. Um, what I gave them, I only gave them four. Tu- I gave them four touchdowns and a field goal in my prediction. Yep. I have to figure one of those goes to a running back. I'm gonna go under. I think I think it's three. I think the number is three for the record. All right. Uh, Trey Hendo carries at 14 and a half under. Under. I just I just have he might not even play. I have no idea. It's it's I I don't know. Marv catches at seven and a half over. Uh, 
How many? What is his high for the season? And I'm not expecting you to look that up, Kyle. But that feels. I have it in front of me, Jared. Oh, you do. Uh, Nomad 10. said. Nomad said ten as well. Yeah. Um, I'll go over. I'll go over. It's going to be another game where he needs. They need him to come up big, and yeah, he'll come up big. Over. Uh, Ibuka. I never answered. Uh, I never answered. I'll go. I'll go over as well. But I think it's eight. I, I think it's eight. And that's over. Ibuka. I about said flexing. Uh, Ibu, he he put an X over every M here. Ibuka, Fleming, and Stover touchdowns at one and a half under. They're not they're not consistently getting touchdowns, so I, I'm not. I don't feel comfortable of saying between the three of them they'll get more than one. Nomad beat me to it. If this is what happens, I feel like it'll be two to Stover. Um. I, I think the breakdown is probably one rushing touchdown. I probably, I'm going to say I'm going to say two two rushing touchdowns, two passing touchdowns, and a field goal. I think is. Uh, by the way, Kyle, I totally didn't mention a very important thing that I feel like has to be said, and I know you wanted to hurry, so I apologize. Um, scoring percentage oh god i don't have touchdown percentages here damn it i wish i had that number michigan's not good at scoring touchdowns in the red zone i my 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 numbers i put in the notes are only scoring percentage and not touchdown percentage um kyle i'll, I'll look it up go ahead and give me the next question all right uh ruggles field goals at one and a half well my my prediction has them at one so by that, I'm going to go under. I know my prediction also has them at one, but I'm still going to go over. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And By the way, I just Googled Michigan stats and Google's like, do you mean Michigan State? No, it's not what I said. Uh, let's see. The safety tandem tackles of Ransom and Hickman at 10 and a half over, over. Ransom is playing lights out right now. I'm going to go over for 10 and a half tackles total for Ransom and Hickman. Um, uh, um, let's, I'm going to go, I'm going to go over. I'm going to go over. All right. Again, like a lot of, I said a lot of those defensive line numbers are going to move to the linebackers, but I think uh, some of those linebacker, Stats might also and, move back to the safeties. And the last one here, dams we give for the whole state of Michigan at 0. 0.5. Under. Under. Under, 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 under. Agreed. Agreed. And I believe Stuart had a few questions here. He says, in, in, in good old Stuart fashion here, uh, number of hot dogs, horrible pockets at the start of the game at three and a half. Bull hot dogs? He just says number of hot dogs here. And, and oh. we, we had this discussion before how many he could fit in those khakis. Do they have to remain intact? No, they don't have to. Oh, over then. Over, 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 over. 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 <laughs> if right, you said here, if yep. you said they had to remain intact, under. Mm -hmm. But not number, over. Right, and the number of things thrown by Harbaugh at eight and a half to include, but not limited to, papers, headsets, and tantrums. Oh, he included tantrums, so over. Let me ask you this, Stuart. If he throws his clipboard and the papers dislodge from said clipboard, do the individual yeah. papers count as individual items thrown? That's just one thrown? Well, well, okay, and, and here's the thing. He, he throws and has a tantrum. So does that count as two? No, no, that's, that's a single incident is what I'm, is what, oh, he says okay. yes, then over. He said, Stewart said yes, so over. All right. All right. I got, I got the stats here, Jared. 59 red zone attempts. Okay. Right. 59 red zone attempts, 38 touchdowns. That, 
When you said I have the number, I would have expected you to divide it already. I'm just saying. I would have expected you to already have the math in place. And since I'm a good co-host. 64% of the time they're in the red zone, they score a touchdown. 64%. Considering their schedule, that's dog shit. In Ohio State. Touchdown percentage. He's doing the math. Percentage is just shy of 80%. There you go. That's a, that, by the way, that, that could be the game. My biggest regret right now is that my, my score prediction has Michigan scoring two yeah. touchdowns and I should have been, I should have been going up by threes, not sevens. I've, I've already fucked up my, it's over. Uh, I, my prediction's in the trash. Good Throwing trash papers right. while Throwing a tantrum is a double whammy. Yeah, we're definitely yeah. going over that. All right, and the last over unders here because um, we love we love uh, we love Zach here, so we're going to throw him Buckeye Zach. We're going to throw him some love here. So he has some he has some over unders real quick here as well. Uh, he has Xavier Johnson return kickoff <laughs> returns for a touchdown at one and a half under. I love I love you, Zach. I really do, but yeah, under. Um, <laughs> number of total yards for Hayden at 115. Oh. Okay, I was I was expecting them to continue to be absurd and then this is actually <laughs> um I'll go over cuz I do anticipate that he'll get the majority of the carries Saturday. I'm going to go under. I think I think it'll be close to that, but I I'll, I'll go under. Rushing yards, uh how many rushing yards does the Silver Bullets hold Teton to at 105? I'm going to go over. I'm going to go is, over. Man, if they can hold them to 105, that that's a win. That's a win right there for Ohio State. I, I the, If Ohio State holds Michigan to under 105, they win, period. Yeah, 105 on the ground. That was the question, Gangland. Yes. Yeah. I, I'm going to go over. That's just who Michigan is. They... What, what, what's what's the stat there? They are averaging t- almost 250 yards per game. Yeah, I'll go over. Uh, the number of times CJ throws to Cade Stover at eight. Well, throws two is different than receptions. It is, but yeah. but still yeah. under, but still under. Yeah, under. And uh, Latham Ransom pick six at point five. Oof. I mean under. To, to predict any player gets a pick six in any single game is ridiculous. So I have to say under. Yep. And the last one, sex by Zach Harrison at one and a half. Imagine if we I'm, imagine if we had this number last week. He has zero for the entire game, then gets two on the last two plays. And you actually had money on it. <laughs> yeah. Under. He's only uh, JJ McCarthy only been sacked eight times this year. Right. And, and, I, and I also get that he hasn't thrown the ball a ton. Michigan hasn't thrown the ball a ton, and that skews that number. But still, it's a very, very good offensive line under. All right. And that, Jared, is all of the questions we have for today. All right, um, Kyle, we're already over. So I'm going to fast forward to the end of the show, if you don't mind. All right. Go right ahead. All right. Tonight's ending music. Uh, by, uh, go to, to the sloopcast.com and just find links to all of our stuff. Um, join the discord server because Twitter is going down in, in flames and fire and um, good, good luck. Yeah, Stuart, you're right. I actually had a band picked out, but no, you're right. That, that, yeah. Tonight we're going to play the dead Shembecklers, um, who is, who are a uh, Ohio state Punk band who does Ohio State comedy songs is the best way I can describe them off the top of my head. Um, so, yeah, tonight we'll be playing the Dead Shembecklers. So with all that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support your local podcasters. Once again, this is the Dead Shembecklers. <laughs>